Hey yo guys, it's time for me to give you my overall thoughts on the WWE draft that you know took place on the three hour raw and yesterday the supplemental draft which took place on WWE.com. I'm just gonna run through, you know, each and every pick for each show and you know give you my thoughts on the guys moving and you know is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? So we may as well get into it. Now I'm just gonna go through each show per se. I don't know if I can fit it in all the time here, but you know, let's just go here. Uh, the first pick in the whole draft was uh, Rey Mysterio. Uh, Rey Mysterio, by the way, had, he just had to be flown in like minutes before the show as he was, uh, or hours before the show, I should say, because he was doing promotional work in Mexico uh, for the WWE, and, you know, he, he was completely shocked, as you could tell, because, you know, he could tell he was really shocked that he got drafted to Raw. Um, Mysterio to Raw, he'll bring, you know, that big Latino fan base that would watch SmackDown probably to Raw or you know, a newer Latino audience to Raw, which I think will obviously increase ratings there. Uh, I mean, I think Mysterio is going to be, you know, even though he's a small, I think he's a guy that can work with a lot of the bigger guys. He's been doing a career out of this, so I think he's going to be successful on there. Even though SmackDown's maybe the show more for him, you know, Raw will be good for him because I think Raw will tone his style down a bit because, you know, WWE wants him not to uh, fly around the ring because he's been hurt as well. And, you know, anyone who thinks... Ray's a big loss to SmackDown. Ray's been off SmackDown for a while with injuries, so it's not really a big loss with uh, Ray gone, as I first thought. But, you know, I think Ray, Ray could shine here. Uh, the next pick for Raw was CM Punk. You know, CM Punk, he needed to move shows, but I'm not sure if Raw was the show for him because Raw, I think he could get lost in the shuffle once again on Raw and be one of those guys lost in the shuffle, and, you know, he of it and survive. I think SmackDown was the show for him because SmackDown is the more all-around wrestling show and uh, Michael Hayes I think has uh, more of a belief in CM Punk there. The only way maybe Punk can work is if you turn Punk heel because we all know Punk heel is fantastic especially with the mic work and his, his in-ring won't change but his mic work will give him this new uh, hateability if you will. I think you can do a great program there with uh, Punk and Michaels, which would be really, really interesting to see. Um, once uh, Cade, Jericho, and Michaels program finishes up, or, you know, I think there's lots of possibilities there. You could even do a Cena Punk program, which would be really, really interesting. But, you know, I think maybe Punk should overall go, good, should have gone to Smack. Let's see how this works out for now. I just don't want him to get lost at the shuffle because, you know, he's already lost a lot of credibility since he won money in the bank. <laughs> Anyways, the next pick was Michael Cole with the announcer switching place here. Uh, you know what? Michael Cole moving, it's it's going to ruin, like not ruin Raw, but it's going to tone down the quality because you're going to hear Michael Cole mark out over anything amazing and stuff like that. I mean, Cole and King have worked together, so I mean, I'm not worried about how they'll work together. I think Cole can work with anyone that, you know, works well with him. I mean, if you've seen, you've seen Cole with Taz, King, and Foley uh, as the past weeks on SmackDown have been, you know, I think they're going to work out fine, but, you know, I think it's just a big loss for Raw, especially since I definitely could that Cole clearly knew the draft was coming, he was going to Raw. He got up so fast to get get out of, to make sure he would get that chair that JR was in. So, you know, that's kind of a cheap shot there, but anyways, I think Cole, Cole will work out fine because he's got King to be there with him. I think King's a pretty weak announcer now, but still, I think they can maybe make it work. Then the next pick was Batista. You know, Batista really wasn't a surprise. I feel that the WWE rewarded Batista because, you know, he'd actually been trying to put effort in on his matches, and, you know, he'd, he'd just been trying a little harder, which I think, you know, rewarded him. It's like, hey, you know what? We're going to reward you, and you're going to go to the A show. And, you know, I think that's going to be a good thing there because, you know, you can do uh, Cena, Batista, uh, two babyface programs. We've never seen that before, and that'd be really interesting. And a Randy Orton, Batista program, which I think would be great there, just who hasn't seen those types of programs. And I guess maybe we can get the culmination of Jericho and Michaels and now because Batista was part of that already. So, you know, I, I think that'll be great. But he really wasn't that big of a surprise going because we all knew that he was one of the big stars that Raw was going to take. Then the next pick was Kane. Uh, I mean, this is all from, obviously, the TV draft. Uh, Kane, who cares, really? Kane isn't that like, as Michael Cole would have you believe, Kane, who really cares? Kane just seems like he was just on Raw. He just had a stint on SmackDown for a year or two and, and uh, ECW. So Kane on Raw, wow. I mean, it's not that big a deal. I, yeah, you're, obviously he's losing the title at Night of Champions. And I just, I don't see that much potential with Kane on Raw again. Unless you want to do a Kane-Batista program. I don't see happening. 
Then on to the supplemental draft, uh, the first pick that Raw gained was Jamie Noble. Noble, I don't like on Raw at all. Smaller guys do not succeed unless your name is Rey Mysterio. I really don't see him being successful because you've seen a, a lot of the smaller guys, the, like London and Kendrick, they barely got used on frickin' Raw. So I just don't, I see the same thing happening here with Noble. Uh, he was going to be a lost uh, guy in the shuffle. If you didn't think you saw Jamie Noble as much on SmackDown, you're barely going to see him on Raw. Then, uh... Uh, Raw game Deuce. I think this will be a good thing. We can now get a transition into Deuce. They're trying to, I, apparently they want to make Deuce the next Jimmy Snuka since, you know, he is Snuka's son. And, you know, the 50s gimmick was wearing a fin on us. You know, that's pretty intriguing there. So I think, I think Deuce could shine, maybe be a good undercard heel or, you know, teaming up with, uh, Paul, Paul Burchill, I think would be maybe a little interesting there. Um, Chuck Palumbo, I think he could be the same thing there. Uh, a nice little heel run there. Uh, or maybe you can switch him babyface and you know, have him feud with Punk again. I think that could be a little interesting there for a while. Uh, or, or, I don't know, someone else, Kofi Kingston, who you just got. And I personally, let's just view, Kofi is a terrible pick. Kofi, Kofi's still a green guy who needed ECW, who needed to develop a lot more. And, you know, he's developing well, but he really does not need this Raw move. Raw will just hurt him in his footsteps right now. So, I'm really not looking forward to Kofi Kingston Raw because I don't see him progressing anywhere. And then Raw also gained Matt Stryker and Layla. Stryker is a good guy, you know. They're gonna transition his mouthpiece work into there, which is really good. I mean, he's always good on the mic. And you, you could even make him a baby face, that underdog, gritty baby face from you know the old '80s, because I've seen his work in the Indies and uh, 3PW. So he's been pretty. He's he should do there. And Layla, you know, she's she can be a top heel. Uh, uh, undercard heel diva, which she's continuing, so I think that'll be fine. So that's moving me, switching over to SmackDown. First pick SmackDown got was Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy obviously moved to SmackDown because the company could not put any more faith in him. He's had two strikes. They got to put him on the B show. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's he's gonna replace Mysterio's high flying in there, but you know, I, I, I honestly really do like on there. I think Jeff Hardy can you know have some great programs with a lot of the guys on there already, and. Uh, like an MVP, Jeff Hardy would be really good because he wanted to work with MVP. He did state that, so I think that'll be fine. Jim Ross moving there, big shocker there. Jim Ross looks so pissed off that he had to switch from good old Raw to SmackDown, and he almost quit the company, to be honest with you. And he did look like someone took a dump in his ego wall. So, you know, that's... <laughs> I feel bad for Jim Ross, but then can you blame him not telling the guy that you're switching him shows after he's worked with his company forever? And, you know, he's not going to go to Connecticut to do the dub over, so you better install DSL in his house, because that's the only way he's going to do it. Or you can only redub Foley, because Jer uh, Jim Ross does not want to do that. But Jim Ross adds tons of credibility, and they're obviously stacking up smack about to make the move to My Network TV, which we'll get to with some of the guys that they've selected, uh... You know, they got Umaga. Obviously, Umaga was going to go Umaga. You can make him that monster heel again. Or it looks like they're trying to turn him a baby face, which we haven't seen in a while since, I guess, Kane's original baby face run. Uh, I think that could work. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, he needed to go to SmackDown. He needed to get working again. I mean, he kind of he actually did get lost in the shuffle on Raw. So I think SmackDown's his chance more to work with some guys, like even a Jeff Hardy or an MVP there, too. So that'll be good. Uh, and then, obviously, they got Triple H. Triple H, he seemed very, you know, shocked and upset that he got switched to uh, SmackDown. But really, SmackDown benefits him. He, he gets to work Tuesdays. He gets a lighter schedule, if you think about it. So I don't see why you're complaining. Anyways, yeah, Triple H is one of the main guys why they moved him there because of the My Network TV thing. So I think that should be fine. Then moving on to the supplemental draft, Trevor Murdoch. You can have him, I don't know, feud with freaking... Kozlov, like I stated before in my predictions, or uh, team up with uh, Jesse and Festus, just, you know, that little singing thing. Uh, Big Daddy V, he's a good acquisition there. You can maybe feud him up with Umaga, because uh, he can now be the big dominant uh, heel on SmackDown, and uh, Umaga be that monstrous type uh, George Steele babyface, only less cartoony. Uh, Kendrick, Kendrick is going to maybe not succeed as well. I think of all the shows, Kendrick should have gone is ECW, because ECW, he's going to work more. Uh, Maria, Maria definitely felt the Playboy curse here, and she got shafted to SmackDown, and, you know, she's a bit upset about it, but really, you haven't progressed as much in the ring, so, you know, you're going to have to stick on SmackDown. Benjamin, I think Benjamin should have stayed on ECW a little bit longer to work on his mic skills. 
That's all I really got to say there. Carlito, you're not going to do anything really in SmackDown. You're just going to draw in less Latinos of anything, and you're going to still be by Triple H because you're an idiot. Then ECW, quickly, you know, Matt Hardy uh, and Finley, they're going to be the veterans there, taking the Chris Benoit role that he was supposed to have last year, which is always a good thing, helping these younger guys out. Uh, super crazy, you know, he's going to be good there. Hopefully we can get some super crazy Nunzio to maybe even relive some old ECW, even though the quality won't be the same. You know, I'll still do that. And Mark Henry, he will be our dominant champion for a while. And I think Mark Henry is going to progress well there because he belongs there. And, you know, uh, he's, he's a pretty good dominant heel. And, you know, you can have him against Evan Bourne or something like that. It's going to work like that. But anyways, that's my thoughts on the whole draft. Uh, I think a lot of the moves were good. But most of the, the supplemental draft was balls. Anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.